Are you listening to me? Yes. Yeah, sit down. Now, why the man with one talent did not use the one talent? Number one, he said, I was afraid, I was afraid. And I hid the talent. Amen. Fear is the reason for not obeying the call of God and using the one talent. Fear that you will not be enough. Fear that you will not be able to. But I can tell you, if you go to an island and you stay on that island for 10 years, quoting these same scriptures, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Telling people about Jesus Christ for 10 years. Whether you are afraid or you are not afraid, it will have an effect after some time. Yes. Amen. Amen. What do you think? (laughs) You may be afraid. And by the way, everybody is afraid. Everybody who sits on a plane is afraid. Even the pilot is afraid. If he was not afraid, he would not check so many things before he takes off. (laughs) Yeah. We don't follow fears. Amen. Amen. We don't follow fears. Sometimes when I think of Billy Graham or Bonke, how much they traveled up and down, up. Do you know Billy Graham preached in Ghana? He came to Kumasi and preached in Kumasi. Yeah. They traveled and traveled and traveled and traveled for the Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. So when I think of all these people, I say, hey, what am I, going to, what am I going to be afraid of? When we were coming from the crusade, the Ethiopian airlines that crashed, our team was in the plane behind them. They were, they were all on the runway to take off. This one, then a plane, then us. This one went and didn't come back. Yeah. There are many many things to be afraid of. But if you look at what you are afraid of, to decide whether you are going to serve the Lord or not, you are going to be cut out. Many people are afraid. As for fear, everybody is afraid. But it is whether you follow your fears or not. And you have to decide what I am afraid of, I will not follow. That's what I have decided. When I sense fear, I tell myself, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do what I'm afraid of. Yes. That's a way to overcome fear. You do what you're afraid of doing. But you have to recognize that you're afraid. If you don't recognize that you're afraid, you never do the will of God. You have to recognize that. I can sense that I'm now becoming afraid of something. And as you become afraid, you, say, you decide, I will do what I am afraid of. Why? Because the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear. That means that fear is not a mood. It's not a feeling. It is a spirit. And because it's a spirit, you must not follow it. Because it's an evil spirit. And when you follow fear, you are following an evil. You are following an evil spirit. And it's very, very, very dangerous to follow an evil spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me. Where does he lead you to? So if the Lord leads you to green pastures, where do you think an evil spirit will lead you to? (laughs) 
he will lead you to a very wild place. Desert, sea water, to drink salt, to hell. So once you are following an evil spirit, you are following something that is leading you to a bad place. I remember when I was in university, there was a beautiful girl. And um, when she was in the midst of her youth, her father fell in love with another lady, not her mother. And left her mother and went to, with this other person. So their family, they had a very ideal family. Here's the father, here's the mother, here are the children. They were all living happily ever after, just like in the books, in the storybooks. But when this lady came and she fell in love, that was the breakup of her ideal family. Now, when she grew up and she went to the university, a very beautiful girl, I remember her clearly. Hey, so many people wanted to marry her, but she was always remembering what happened to her mother. Because you can imagine, her mother was devastated. All the children were devastated. So what she had experienced really affected her. This one will come, I want to marry you. <laughs> she will laugh with the person. This one, because I want to marry you. She never say no, never say yes. This one will come, I want to marry you. Never say no, never say yes. Never say no, never say yes. Never married. No man could take her. Beautiful lady. You know, there are some people who no one proposes to, but this one, people were proposing. People were saying, I want to marry you, I want to marry you. But you see, what she didn't realize was that fear had gripped her and she was afraid to move into something that, that could, I mean, affect her so badly. So you must identify the fears that you have. Because the Bible says, he delivers me from all my fears. So you have to know what you are afraid of and overcome what you are afraid of specifically. Otherwise, you, 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 can't, you can't flow, you can't work with God. Every day you see that you are limited by your fear. He says, I was afraid and I hid myself. So people are hiding in the ministry because they are afraid in the ministry. Yeah, they hide their gifts. I hid thy talent. I hid the one talent because I was afraid. I was afraid I would fail. I was afraid it wouldn't work. I was afraid people would laugh at me. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Yeah. Yeah. So, how many of you are bound by the spirit of fear? Hey, a lot of hands. Stand up if you are bound by the spirit of fear. Uh, Bishosaki. Please take a microphone and ask them what they are afraid of for me. No, don't sit down. Don't sit down. Stand up. Hello? Hello? Yes, coming to you directly. So, tell us, what are you afraid of? What's your name? My name is Sandra. Lady Pastor Sandra, what are you afraid of? Going to new places and experiencing new environments. Why? Just fear of the unknown. You, fear you, of the unknown. You are born in Australia. No, I was born in Zimbabwe. So I was born in Zimbabwe, then I went to the UK. Then from the UK, I came here to Australia. But still, the fear is still around. I'll go, but the fear is there. Oblique. <laughs> Oblique sensual. So, when the person speaks, then you diagnose. Yes. Next. Okay, yes. Oh, I'm a, my name is Saya. 
I'm afraid of people laughing at me when I try to talk to them about the gospel because of my past. Yeah. Mm. Which means your past is your past is not good. Is that is the reason? Yeah. So diagnose. Oblique sensual. Yeah, oblique sensual. Yes, coming for you directly. My, my name is Elijah. Uh, uh, Fiji. Okay. My fear is uh, committing. Uh, committing to something. Uh, something godly. It's something that. You're afraid. Just afraid. I can, I can feel the fear in the microphone, I tell you. <laughs> hey. Hey. Wow. So, this is how do you diagnose it? Oblique sensual. Oblique sensual. Yes, then you. Um, my name is James. You are here in Australia. My fear basically is uncertainties. You know, even when I planned to come study in Australia the first time, I was very uncertain about how to live and even sustain myself here. So the fear of uncertainty of how you can survive elsewhere is basically the problem here. Yeah. Wow. Oblique wow. Etli. Etli. <laughs> Pastor Paul, <laughs> coming for you. Okay, um, Pastor Paul from Sydney. Um, Bishop, I don't know what uh, to expect. Uh, just a fear of the unknown, like taking the step, what's going to happen, what am I going to do? Just expectations, like what's going to happen? Is it going to work? Is it not going to work? And just like I start to start kind of calculate things in my head and I kind of withdraw myself, that's all. You want to be a millionaire? <laughs> you, you want to be a millionaire? Oblique what? Earthly. <laughs> Earthly, I think it's Oblique earthly. earthly. Yeah. Beautiful. Hmm. Yes. Stay uh, Pastor Enoch from Sydney. Bishop, <laughs> uh, these are the nice proper guys. So nice ones. Where is Louisa? Why is she not sitting in the front here with you? The She's pastors are for the pastors. Pastors, yes. okay. Oh, Louisa, you didn't raise your hand for the fear. You did. Then why do you sit down? Come, come. <laughs> Bishop Saki is waiting for you. Yes. Now speak to us. My name is Louisa. Fear of not finishing what I start. Fear of not finishing what you start. Explain it, please. This is a question. <laughs> so I kind of have a history of um, having speed to start some things and right in the middle I slow down so I just fear so you won't start at all no I will I, I do but I just fear that I would not complete what I start or not complete it well so. mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah try to take us on another target <laughs> Okay, at the back there, more fear. Yes, let's go there. Oh, yes, please. I'm Gladys from Fiji. Okay. I'm just scared of heights. Heights. <laughs> She's scared of heights. So you can't fly. So she, did you fly here? Yes, Bishop. Ah, but you overcame the fear to fly. Yes. Okay. Next. I'm Stella and I'm from Fiji. My fear that I have is when I go out and people quench my fire. Uh -huh. And this couple of other come, so come out. Yes. Okay. Um, my name is Ekena Batua. Um, I'm afraid of going out to tell people about Christ because I'm very shy and always fear that people will laugh at me. So, <laughs> all right, yes. Your name? Uh, my name is Jason, and I'm uh, New Zealand. Okay, yes. 
So my PM will be, I think, talking to strangers because I never know what they can do to you and what they're gonna say and how they're gonna, they might push you down or just say something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then. My name is Wong. I'm from New Zealand. We help. Name is Wong. Yes. You're supposed to come to Bible school, remember? We did all the interview and all that, but you did your PhD, so you didn't come. I, I will come. So you finished now? No, I haven't. I finished my PhD and I got a job now, but my mom wasn't a, didn't agree me to come to Bible school that, day, that time. So he asked, she asked us to get married that time. So we got married then. And uh, what I'm afraid of, um, I'm facing some of the New Zealand people, they have tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> It's powerful. Okay. It's Mr. Scary. Saki, I think some of this side, this side. Okay, let me cross over to the other side. All right. Sister Paula. Paula Coroma. Um, I'm afraid of like ministry not working because of what I've been through, I think people will not listen to me and I don't know. Yeah, but I'm just afraid I'm doing it, but I'm afraid because I've been disappointed many times. Like Bishop was saying, you give, give, and you don't receive back. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm afraid. Yes. Gamma. Pastor Gamma. Yes. Fear of rejectment and fear of failing. They're the two things. Rejectment. Yeah. Why? I don't like failing. You don't like failing? I don't like it. We all don't like to fail. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's one of the things. It's either if I realize that this, I'm not going to fail it, then. I sort of back out, yeah, hold on, and then sometimes reject it. If I feel that I can't get through to certain types of people, it, then I just find it very difficult to connect because mm. I just feel that these people, are, maybe I can't, they are sort of like rejecting what I'm saying or what I'm coming yeah. with. Yeah, next. Yes. Um, fear of not being good enough. Fear of not being good enough. Yeah. Wow. So you people, are you seeing that the Bible is true? I mean, one talent, last person over there. Yes. One talent has been given. My name is Peter. I have fear of failing. Fear of failing. Yes. Because 10 years ago, my wife and kids walked out from me. And I lost everything I had. I also was in the Uber, Uber industry driving and back in November I got random shot and I have a fear of going back to that industry but I love driving people to church. I want to go back to it again. Wow. <laughs> okay, sit down. Now, you see... How many realize that the fears are common? The fear you have is similar to the person next to you. Fear. And those who didn't get up. Fear of getting up. At least those of you who stood up overcame the fear of getting up. Clap for those who got up. many didn't get up because you had the fear of getting up? <laughs> yes. You know, this is why I believe that Jesus Christ is God. Because these are words spoken by a 29-year-old, 30-year-old man. 
2,000 years ago. It's so true. Years go by, it's true. He gives to you one talent. Israel said, I was afraid and I hid myself. And you go through the congregation and you see fear is everywhere. Yes. So many people are afraid of failing and are afraid of being laughed at. You get it? Yes. And so if I tell you, do I look like somebody who has fears as well? Ha, huh, then you don't know me. There is nothing that I have done in the mission that I wasn't afraid before I did it. Yes. Everything I have done, I was afraid and I still did it. Yeah, because I decided that because it's a spirit of fear, I will do it. Starting a church, you can ask Bishop Saki, we discussed. He even suggested that we should start the church outside the city so that if it doesn't work, nobody will know that the church didn't work. He's here, you can ask him. It's true. We're afraid that the church wouldn't work. We're afraid the church will not grow. Churches we've planted, we've started, we're afraid that they wouldn't grow. Crusades, I was afraid that people would not come. Started healing, we're afraid that people will not be healed. Everything. Fear of doing it. Fear that we will not have enough. Fear that we will not be alive. Fear that we will be dead. We will not see the end of what we are doing. Fear of, of flying. I mean, one day I was on a plane. I saw a man with a spanner. He was now, I mean, repairing the plane. I said, look, this is too much. The plane that I'm about to fly, you are now fixing something in it. Oh, man. can see the man doing this thing and you are on the plane you know so you can see that fears are the same how many have been afraid of flying ah you see now yeah when the plane is going through some turbulence you will say, Lord Jesus. Thank you. If you follow fear, you are following an evil spirit. So I want to tell you the way to overcome fear is to do what you are afraid of. Yes. When you see that fear is now controlling you, step forward. Yes. And go forward. Don't allow your experiences in life to hold you back. Yes. You know, one day I prayed to God and I said, Lord, why is it that everything I do doesn't grow? That was before the church ever grew. I said, I do things, I start, I'll start this one, it never grows. I start this one, it never grows. I start this one, it never grows. The devil knows that the thing is going to grow. So he makes you afraid. So fear is, is an entity whispering to you and holding you back. Yes. And so you have one talent, but you cannot move at all. So hidden gifts. Hey, but I tell you, it may sound funny today, but if you die and you go and meet the Lord and the Lord starts to bring out your gifts and says, you see what I gave you? You didn't use it. You didn't use it. You didn't use it. You didn't use it. Even to sing, you need to overcome fear. Because when you are singing, you see, you never know when you start, you never know whether you will get to that note. So you, you, never, you never know when you are going to screech. And whether people are going to laugh at you. 
And after that, you will not sing again. So there's some boldness that you need in order to be a good singer. Singers have fears. Singers are tense. But you need to overcome your fears. Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7. Then Gideon rose up early and he pitched the tent. Verse 2. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many. I don't need many talents. Lest Israel vomit themselves against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Verse 3. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned 20 and 2,000, and there remained 10,000. So 22 over 32 times 100 is what percentage? 22,000, 68.75. That is 70% of the people were afraid. 68, when you round it up, 22,000. So fear is the number one killer of the call of God. 22,000 said, Charlie, we are afraid. Let's be honest. We are afraid we will die. We are going back. So God gave us this scripture to show the figure of how the majority are afraid. And fearful people are no use in battle. So, when we sit here and the church is fearful, no matter what you message you preach, you are useless to the message because you are afraid. Yes. So, those of you who boldly stood up to say you are afraid, don't just accept it. I am a fearful person. I am a, I'm a frightened person. As for me, I'm afraid. No. It's not good enough. To, it's nice. It's truthful. It's honest. But it's an evil spirit. How can you be saying, oh, that's for me, you know, I have a spirit of adultery. It's just something I do all the time, you know. It's just, that's just how I am. I just have this adultery spirit. You know, it, it, would it be a good thing to say that? It's like, yeah. So that's what you are saying about fear. So I have fear. I have fear. It's like fear is nothing, but fear is the greatest killer of your life and your calling. Amen. So, don't let one bad relationship make you afraid of men. That's how you have women's movements. Yes. It's true. One bad experience with a man. I say, all men are like this. All men are like that. All men are that. As for men, they are this. Men are goats. Men are animals. Men are mad. Men are that. Men are this. Men are that. One bad experience, and suddenly you've got a doctrine. Don't let your bad experience destroy you because of fear. So I want to see many of us young, you you cannot achieve much. Look, can you imagine those going to the moon for the first time? How they'll be afraid that they won't come back. Huh? Yes, and what about those who test planes? I mean, a plane has been built and you are testing it to see whether it can fly. I mean, those are test pilots. <laughs> they fly empty planes just to see whether it works. Hmm? Many things we are doing we would never do because of fear. Today marks the end of fear in your life in Jesus' name. Today marks the end of fear in your life in Jesus' name. Today marks the end of fear in your life. Today marks the end of fear in your life. In the name of Jesus. Fearlessly, we are going to the islands. 
fearlessly we are going to the ends of the earth. Amen. Fearlessly we are going to do the will of God. Amen. 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 Second reason why people don't use the one talent is hiding of gifts. Now, hiding, he says, I was afraid and I went and hid. Now, hiding means to conceal intentionally. Now, one of the ways you see that people have concealed their gifts is when it comes to certain other things, you see them using the same gift. When it comes to school, when it comes to work, you see that the person has brought out her gift. She's talking a lot. She's boldly speaking. She says it's her career. And she's suddenly got the energy to stand up and speak in public. Hey! Hey. It's like money. When it comes to the church, you keep the money. But when it goes to something else, you see that you have money to buy tickets. You have money to buy this. You have money to buy that. But when it came to the church, you conceal this. Oh, sorry, we don't have. So concealing your gift, hiding your gift, hiding your gift, bring out your gift and use your gift. Every gift must come up. You know, we have dancing stars. Are you dancing stars? Great. But there are people who can dance who don't dance. And it takes a gift to dance. If it's just one talent, you can dance for the Lord. We have film stars. Do you have film stars? There are people who can act and just keep you as engaged as if it was even preaching. But they are hiding their gift. There are so many things that you could do for the Lord. You could do many things. And you need to come out and bring them out in the church. My mother could not preach. My mother is a Swiss woman. She could not preach. But there were so many things that she could do in the church. She she, she used to teach the children during holidays how to even pack. When it was her birthday recently, her 80th birthday, some of the children were saying, she taught us how to pack our bags and to pack our suitcases and to pack our things. For school. That during the holiday, they used to have some classes at the church. And she said, she taught us how to do, to do things. I said, wow. She planted many trees. She loves trees, so she planted trees in the Anakazo campus. She'd come and plant and be watering all the flowers. That's what she could do. And she did it. What can you do to help? Many people just look and say, these people, I will not do anything. So what is going to happen is that sometimes another person who is ready to use his or her gifts, yes, that's what happens sometimes in people's marriages. God gave you a beautiful body that you could use, but you don't use it. So somebody else who is ready to bring out her gift comes on the scenes and just unfolds the gift and says, here it is. Ready for use. Because yours, you don't want to. You've concealed it. You are drying it. <laughs> hey! Are you listening to me? Yes. So, it's time to bring out your gifts. And as you go along, God shows you, oh, you can do this. So because you see a glimpse of it. You see all the songs that I did. I never knew that I could write songs. Yes, but I've never written a song my whole life. Till I just, we just started. And you're enjoying the songs. Yes. Yeah. What I'm saying is that there are more gifts. And sometimes because you are not using your gift, God gives another gift to somebody to use. Yes. 
And you'll be surprised so many gifts you have. As you are hiding your gift. Hiding your talent. So from today, today marks the end of hiding of talents and gifts in the name of Jesus. Amen? Number three. Fault finding. Again, it's an oblique demonic thought. Finding fault. I know you are a hard man. Reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. Okay? So, I know you are a hard man. Now, don't find fault with anybody. Amen. Amen. When you find fault, okay, you are accusing. You are accusing. So don't find fault with me. God already sees my faults. You are, you, 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 God doesn't need your help to help to, to locate my faults. You are not going to help God. How many know that? Yes. There is no man of God or pastor who doesn't have faults. There's nothing like that. God doesn't use angels. Angels are not allowed to preach. Have you ever wondered why? Angels are not allowed to preach. Do you remember the story in Acts chapter 10 where the angel came to Cornelius' house And the angel told Cornelius, go to, there is a man in Joppa called Peter. Go to him and he will speak to you the words of life. So the angel told Cornelius to go and fetch Peter to come. And Peter came and whilst he was preaching, the spirit fell on them in Acts 10 44. Send men to Joppa. Call for one Simon. Listen, are you watching me? Here is Cornelius. Here is the angel. The angel can tell Cornelius about Jesus. The angel is not allowed to mention Jesus or allowed to preach to Cornelius. The angel is only telling Peter, telling Cornelius, call this man who is allowed to preach. That's his job. He can preach, but you are not allowed to preach. Angel. God uses men who are wee-wee, Poo-pooing, smelling, dirty, sinful, wicked, lazy, every bad thing. This is what God has chosen to use. But angels which are sinless, no. I don't want them to preach. They are not allowed to preach. Amazing. It's you that he wants to use. I don't know why. It's you and me. That he has decided to use. This is our chance to do something. Yes. So, hiding your gift, concealing your gift, finding fault with me is not going to help you in any way because he has decided to use a fault filled human being. I, I don't care what fault you are finding. In this Australia church, people have found fault with me. Yes. True or not true? Yeah. But we are still here. If you're finding fault with me, it doesn't change anything about me. I'm finding a thousand faults with me. It doesn't change anything about me. I'm still here preaching. <laughs> and fault-filled people will be preaching till the end of this era and this season. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to find a fault with me, my friend, is a waste of your time. You made a big mistake. Trying to find a fault with Benny Hinn, you waste your time. Trying to find a fault with Bonke, trying to find a fault with any great man of God, you're wasting your time. There are faults out there we can certify and sign already in advance that the faults have been confirmed. But God has chosen that by the foolishness of preaching through weak vessels. He has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. That's all. A 
angels are not permitted to preach. You are to preach. So rise up today and let's cross over with all our faults. Stand there with all your faults and trust that God will just do what he has to do. You shake the bridge. You shake the city. You shake the island. With all your faults, you shake the city. Shout hallelujah. Number four. The fourth reason why people don't use their talents is because they despise those, those who don't use the one talent, they despise the type of the gift. The one talent. Wow. Now, One talent. Sometimes when you look at your gift, it looks so bland and featureless. Amen? Yeah. Think about the music. Think about how music affects you know, there are a few churches that are enjoying the music that we are enjoying. Is it not true? Yeah. You listen to music, you say, oh, the music is, is preaching to you and it's, it's changing your environment. True or not true? true. Yes, mood changing. Yes. Huh. You can easily despise and what is the song? Oh, come on. We need the word of God. We need the anointing. We need the spirit. We need the what? Spirit. We need a spirit. We don't need all this. What is a song? What's all this? Don't try to minimize the importance of people's gifts. When you see the absence of it, then you see the difference. Yeah. So thank God. Thank God. Whatever type of gift you have, use it. Use it. And like I was even giving the example of my, my own mother. Now when I look back, many things that my mother did. She, she, my mother would never preach, share even a verse, but little things that she has done in the church, in our lives. What a difference. What a difference it makes and it has made. Never think the little gift you have. Oh, we don't need it. There's somebody so good. You know, that thought almost prevented me from starting a church in England. When I was going to start a church in England, there was already a big church from Ghana there. And I said, oh, you don't need, we don't need any new, new church. Or we don't need any. Today, that church is a very small church, and our church is a very big church. Yeah. Our church is very big, and that church is very small. Don't look at your gift and say, oh, not good. Number five. Is it number five or number six? Five. Number five. Don't, they, people don't use their gift because they despise the smallness. It's too small. Too small. First of all, the type of gift is, oh, it's singing. We need the spirit. No. Then when they, when they decided to use it, they said, it's too small. Very small. Very small. Ah. Do you need a a big rat or a small rat on the elephant's ear. Does it make a big, does it make any difference? Yes. So you see, you are measuring something that somebody is not measuring. Yes. Small rat, big rat. We shook the bridge. Yes. We shook what? We shook, we shook the city. We shook the island. Whether it was a big rat or a smallish rat or a fat rat or it, 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 look, please. You are shaking the bridge. You are shaking the city. You are shaking the island. Eesh. 
So never think it's too small. You know, one day somebody was listening to me preaching on television. One of my church members was telling me, she said her parents were watching. Then they just changed the channel. They said, is this preaching? He's just talking. Wow. So you see my talking preaching. Look at how far he's gone. Huh? My talking preaching. I told you I had only one talent. People who can shout and do all those things. Where are they? My one talent preaching. So you don't bother yourself too much about having a big talent or two talents. Only one talent is all that you need. Many are called including you. Yeah. With your small talking preaching. If you can't preach, just preach like me. Yes. If you can't preach, just preach like me. Just talk to the people. Talking preaching. Yes. Talk and be talking. Yeah. No towel. Yeah, you, have you seen me using a towel before? Did you get any towels for me as I've come? Towels, because I went somewhere. They had. They gave me a set of towels for my preaching, and I and I didn't know what it was for. But now, as I'm preaching, I realize that I was supposed to wipe my sweat. They gave me a set of towels with my name written on it to wipe my sweat. Hey! Customized preaching sweating towels. Huh? I heard the bishop saying that you with the 10 denominations, you preach, you don't have any towel. But he with a small church, small preaching towels wiping. So he's praying to God for your anointing. For my one talent. One talent. Without towel. Without a towel. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. And you know, I remember when I first saw Ida singing in school many years ago when she was in, in university. And there were two singers. There were two of them. They were singing, I think, Amazing Grace. She was singing Amazing, one, was, one sang Amazing Grace and then one, she sang something else. And I thought, the other one is, is better than her. Wow. And I had so many people that I always said, this one boy is better than Ida. This one is better than Ida. I always used to see people better than her. But God used her one talent. Yes. Only one talent. Only one talent. Wow. wow. I just have more. How many are glad that you have only one talent? Yeah, why not? Look, it's a one talent church. Yes. One talent, one island. One talent is enough for one island. One small rat is enough to shake the bridge. Because we are sitting on Jesus. We are shaking the bridge. We are shaking the city. We are shaking the island. Without a towel. <laughs> and I was praying for the sick. And even just even this crusade, somebody said, I'm always amazed that it's just a short prayer that you pray. And people are here, but I'm, I'm just surprised. Because it's a one talent healing anointing. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! Everything is one talent. The one talent is we are sitting on Jesus the elephant. Yes. And we are shaking the islands. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, when I was going to start crusades, I said, Look, I sat down and I thought about it. I said, Lord, I don't have any hall or any stadium. So I said, I said, I need to create a hall, like a large hall, that people will come to the crusade. Because I don't have a stadium. That's when I had the idea, get a tent. 
There was no tent in Ghana. We got a tent. And I started preaching in the tent. Hey! And God blessed the little crusade. Then I said, ah, I don't have healings. No one knows me as a miracle worker. I have only one talent. So I, decided, I went and bought crutches. And I held them like that, took a picture. Take a picture. Healing evangelist. I took a picture. I had not even had a cruc- even one crusade. <laughs> one talent I decided I'm going to use. And as I was thinking, I was afraid. I said, what about if nobody is healed? I took the picture. Jesus is a healing Jesus. Hey. You people. Some of you, I think you have five talents. Some people may have two. Me, I've been operating with one talent for a long time. It's true. You can ask Bishop Saki. He was there when I baptized the first person. Ever, first ever baptism. And he started laughing at me. (laughs) You can ask him why after. He saw me using my one talent. First, first ever baptism. I not baptized anybody before. I said, we are going to use the one talent to baptize our members who were all children. Yes. <laughs> you people, you don't know what is in you. Yes. You have been quiet. You should have allowed God to use you more. Yes. You should have looked at the islands and say, I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. What I'm afraid of, that is what I'm going to do. Yeah. yeah. Just arrive and start reading scriptures like a Presbyterian without even speaking in tongues. Just be reading scriptures, reading scriptures. Then. You see that to start with. There is power in the word of God. You are not taking anything. It's the Jesus is the elephant who is going to shake it. Shake the bridge. Are you still around? Reason number six. Overestimating your abilities. Amen. Sometimes you think of yourself as more highly than you ought to. Number seven. Laziness. Oh, Lord, there's the issue of laziness. Is it not true? Yes. How many like sleeping for a long time in the morning? Raise your hand if you like sleeping for a longer time in the morning. Raise your hand. This side, they don't like sleeping in the morning. This, this people How many have noticed it's more difficult to wake up in the morning than any other time of the day? Sometimes I wish I could have a holiday and just sleep every morning. Just wake up late. How many wish for a holiday where you can wake up late? Not a camp like this where you are waking up at 6 o'clock. But God knows when he's going to give you that holiday. Yeah. But I tell you, you are not the only person who likes sleeping late. How many of you like sleeping late in the morning? Wow. Anytime I'm, I'm, I'm on, I've been on a holiday with my wife or family, my problem is to wake up to go for breakfast in time. The sleeping has overtaken the breakfast time. (laughs) Because all of us are lazy by nature. We all want to rest. Is it not true? So stop pretending and acting as if there's something specially wrong with you. You are just a normal human being. 
Oh! You must not allow it to overwhelm you and control you. All of us want to sleep. We all want holidays. We all want to rest. It's human nature. Yeah. That time I've been on holiday, I said, look, the breakfast will end. And it ends. Sometimes I say, look, it should just end because there's no, we cannot get up. We sacrifice as a sacrifice. So I like hotels that their breakfast ends getting to 12. Because sleep has, uh, wants to come. Sleep is like pleasure. You're just resting. But that cannot delete your whole call and your ministry. That's why I said, thou slothful servant. You can feel lazy, but not full of sloth. Full of it. No. Are you there? Yes. So, we must fight to be, to overcome. It's normal thing. It's almost normal to be afraid. It's normal to feel lazy. It's normal to feel like sleeping. It's normal to be wanting to relax. Okay? But it cannot take away your whole calling. That one is too much. Are you with me? All right. Number eight. Not wanting to be cheated. Not wanting to be what? Cheated. Ha! Huh. You don't want somebody to reap where you have not sown. Isn't it? I said you will gather where I sowed not. Gather where I have not strawed. Now, never think of somebody cheating you. If you want to work for God, just work for him. But don't think that somebody is cheating you. As soon as your mind is, ha, ah, somebody is benefiting. Why should the person get this or have that? And if you work, okay, in your secular work, don't think of your bosses as getting something that they are cheating you about. When you think that way, you are not thinking correctly. Yeah. Because your boss have also worked very hard to be where they are, usually. They probably struggle to be where they are. So you don't know what they go. Oh, my boss just goes to play golf. He plays. There's something wrong already. He is reaping that he has not sown. It's an accusation. It's an oblique devilish. The oblique has gone totally into the devilish. And the thoughts you are having are demonic. Yes. So do not allow the devil to make you think, ah, I am the one going to suffer in this island. Whilst Bishop has never been on and on a mission to anywhere. He stayed in Ghana all his life and he wants to send us somewhere. Why doesn't he also leave his house and go on a mission so that we know that he's a real missionary? He's always trying to send us from our homes so that he would take credit for sending us. Your face like a monkey, okay? I have not mentioned your name. So if you know it's not, you don't say that I insulted you. Why is your mind working in an oblique way? He said he doesn't sweat. He's just relaxed all the time. Look, he doesn't even need a towel. He's just enjoying. 
He doesn't need a towel. We bought towels for him. He's not using them. Hey. He's just moving from hotel to hotel. Enjoying. No, no, don't think that way. Don't think that way. When we are taking off, don't think somebody's are, ah, this one, somebody's going to eat it. Who doesn't deserve it? No. Don't think that way. Because most of the time, you don't know. Before this church exists, you don't know the meetings that are being held. You don't know so many things are happening all the time. So much is going on so that the church will exist. Yes, so much. So much. So it's important that you resist all demonic thoughts of somebody is cheating you. Cheating you of what? Is any money missing anywhere? Huh? I'm asking, is any, is any money, is there any money missing anywhere? Do you know of any money that is missing anywhere? Are there any complaints of any money? Is your money missing? Is anybody's money missing? <laughs> Ask your neighbor, is, any, is anything missing? Is your money missing? Then why are you having oblique thoughts? <laughs> yes. Did you ask the person next to you whether his money was... Is there money missing? Then why? All right. Ninth reason. Wickedness. Thou wicked and slothful servant. Isn't it? Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not. All right. So wickedness. Hmm? Till you've experienced it, you not understand this verse. But till you've experienced somebody who could do something to help you but doesn't do it, you'll not understand what he's saying when he says wicked. Because you see that this person could have intervened but did not. Yes. If I told you that they had found the cure for cancer but they've kept it because they want to let you do mammograms. Because the mammogram people want you to do mammogram. Because of how much they get from mammogram. And they found the cure, but they don't want it so that you keep on doing the test. They get, for each mammogram, they get so much. What would you call those people? Yeah. Wicked. <laughs> huh? Wicked. Because they had something they could have intervened, but they did not intervene. A man was walking by the river. And when he walked by, he was in his suit. He was going to work at the bank. He came from an A1 family with an A1 wife and A1 children. And he always prays before eating. He prays before going out. He prays when he comes back. And one day he was going to work in his suit. He, took, he takes his children for swimming on Saturdays. So he was walking by because where his office was was this bank by the river, very beautiful, glass. And as he was passing by, there was somebody in the water, just a little out there, drowning. And the person was shouting, help, help, help. But he was walking in his beautiful suit, perfect, going to work. And he saw the guy. And he goes, help, 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 help. So he continued. And the man went, and he went down that this man went to the office when he got to the bank. He said, Good morning. How are you all? Very good. Uh, come for morning prayer. Because he was so spiritual that he was the type who prays every day before start. So, 
Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another wonderful day. Oh, God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Help us today. Guide us by thy awesome power, thy loving grace, and thy perfect wonderfulness. We thank thee, oh God. Amen. At the end of the day, he said, oh God, thank you. Let's all come together again. He was this prayerful type. And they're always sharing a scripture. And they went back home to his A1 family. When he got home, he saw his wife. Mm, hello, darling. He kissed his children. Mm, mm, A1 family. Isn't it? And then on church on Sunday, hello. Oh, pastor. We have our tithe. As usual, you know, we don't joke with tithe. We really support the church, the work of God. Is he a kind man? He looks good, isn't it? Looks very good. But if you had been there, saw him by the river, when they dragged the body of this boy out, young boy, he was lying there dead. And there was a man who, good swimmer, he takes his family every Saturday swimming. He was a good swimmer. And actually, he was even a diver. Yes. And he was just a 50 meter. But he didn't want to daddy himself. And he didn't want to, like, you know, ruffle himself and be late for work. He was going to be work at like five past eight is his latest. Yes. What crime did this man commit? Nothing. His crime was to do nothing. His wickedness came from doing that. He didn't do anything. He did nothing. Nothing doing made him a wicked man on that day. And whether he's a good person or a wicked man, God will know. And the Bible says, they said to this man, who did nothing, thou wicked, you are a wicked person because you did nothing. When you could have helped, you did not help. When you could have spoken up, you did not speak up. When you could have stepped in, you did not step in. When you could have dived, you did not dive. When you could have swam, you didn't swim. When you could have preached, you didn't preach. When you could have gone, you didn't go. When you could have traveled, you didn't travel. That makes you wicked. Uh, Not taking a knife to kill anybody. So now, you see Jesus calling him, thou wicked and slothful servant, and you are wondering, what are you talking about, Lord Jesus? What is he talking about? He's talking about what he's talking about. Tenth and last reason, being spiritually unprofitable, worthless, useless. What is the point of showing so much love when you get so little feedback? How many would like to marry someone whom just just does nothing just stands there when it's time for hug you have to hold the person's hand say, would you like that no. nothing dead what is the point of being useless Unprofitable, useless, worth nothing. It might as well be a doll. True or not true? Yes. Thou unprofitable servant. So now if you are here, God has brought you to Australia. You must decide in your heart. I will never be called useless as far as God is concerned. God gave me a mother from Switzerland. It will never be useless. Never. It will always have its use for the church. Yes. And a a father from Ghana. It will never be useless. Yes. It will never be useless. I will use everything I have. God will not regret giving me what he gave me. No. He will never regret giving me my color. He will never regret giving me my nationality. He'll never regret giving me my education. Amen. I'll never let him regret giving me the life that he's given me. Amen. I'll never let him regret giving me the money that he gives to me. Amen. It will not be useless to him. Amen. I'll never let him regret that I gave you all this. And what did you do with it? No, it can't happen. It's impossible. That question will never be asked to me Amen. by the grace of God. Amen. Why? How? I gave you all this. I've even asked God that I want to do, finish all my calling and, and be alive. 
Yes, like I want to finish all my calling. Like he wants me to do all what he wants me to do. I've finished all and I'm, I'm finished and I'm, I'm, I'm just there. Yeah. Huh? Everything, every book he wants me to, every church, anything, whatever it is he wants me to, I've done all and I'm just waiting. Wow. It, it must never be worthless. So God brought you to Australia. Take that Australian pastor and look at it and say, why did he give this to me? Hey! Hey! Is it going to be useless? What he gave to you? He said, I'm profitable. It was not profitable to invest in you. That's what it means, an unprofitable investment. Or invested in you, well, you got nothing. That's why people don't come to invest in Africa because it's not profitable to invest there. You invest and you get nothing. So they, don't, they want to invest in other places. God has put investment in me. Yeah. Look at me. I'm educated. I'm a doctor. Hey, I don't joke with being a doctor. I use it all the time. Yes. I don't joke with it. Being a doctor has helped me to save many people's lives. Oh, yes. I've saved people's lives. You may not know. Why should he find it a waste of investment? You, I gave you this, I gave you this. Even when I'm preaching, you can hear that I'm a doctor sometimes. Yes. You can see that it's not, it's, it, 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 it's impossible. I, I mean, how can it be a waste of his investment? Oh, no, 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 no. You from these islands, you know how far it is to come here? <laughs> no, it cannot be a waste of time and a waste of money. The one talent will be used. And the work, it will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stand to your feet. Lift up your hands and call on the Lord. That the talent that he's given you must be used, must be used by the Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord.